PAB. We are back with 8.7, which is L'Hopital's rule, but we actually do it in Chapter 2 in my class. So this is Chapter 2, Section 8.7, which I get is weird. Okay, so let's go back to doing some more examples. So in Example 4, we have the limit as x approaches negative infinity uh, of an x squared over an e to the negative x. So the first thing we should do is plug in and see what happens. Well, this is going to end up being a positive infinity squared, and the bottom is going to end up being an e to the infinity. Both of those are infinitely large. So that means that I'm okay to L'Hopital's, right? So, uh, again, both of those are infinitely large. So when I do my L'Hopital's, uh, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches negative infinity. Uh, derivative of x squared is 2x. Derivative of e to the negative x is going to be an e to the negative x times a negative, right? Uh, so if you want to clean that up, you can. Uh, so I get the limit as x approaches negative infinity of a 2x on top of a negative e to the negative. Right? And when I plug in, I get 2 times infinity, which is infinity, over a negative e to the infinity, which is still an infinity, it's just negative. So uh, again, I'm okay to L'Hopital's. Right? So then I do it again. Right? And when I do L'Hopital's again, I get the derivative of 2x is a 2, and that's the first glimmer of hope, because that's definitely not going to be infinite. Uh, and then again, I, I multiply by a negative when I differentiate. So it's going to end up being a positive e to the negative x, right? Because it was a negative e to the negative x, and what I did here was negative e to the negative x times that negative 1 again, which is how it came out positive. So now when I plug in, I get a 2 over something infinitely large, which is totally 0, right? So anytime you have something finite over something infinite, you get a 0, right? Uh, so if you want to try P4 without me, you can go ahead and do so. You can pause me. P4 is a similar problem. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk through P4. So, uh, so when I go to try P4, right? Uh, sure enough, I get 3 times infinity squared, which is definitely infinite, over e to the 2 infinity, which is definitely infinite. So I'm okay to do L'Hopital's, right? Um, so I get the limit as x approaches infinity of 6x over an e to the 2x times a 2 because of the chain rule. Now I can cancel the 6 and the 2 if I want and make that a 3 on top. So I get that this is the limit as x approaches infinity of a 3x on top of an e to the 2x. Or you don't have to if you don't want. Either way, when I plug in, it's still infinity over infinity. So again, I'm okay to L'Hopital's. So when I differentiate again, I'm going to get a 3 on the top and an e to the 2x times a 2 on the bottom. When I plug in now, I'm going to get a finite number over something infinitely large, which means that my answer is definitely 0. Okay? Oh, sorry, I'll inch you over a little. Okay, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and start segueing into some of the harder indeterminate forms that don't line up the way that you want them to. So uh, the first of those that we're going to do is a 0 times an infinity. So remember, the two forms that we need to have in order to do L'Hopital's are either 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And if it's not one of those two, uh, then we run into an issue. So this is our example 5. Uh, let's do the limit as x approaches uh, infinity of e to the negative x times the square root of x. Now, when you plug this in, e to the negative infinity is essentially a 0, and the square root of infinity is infinity. So this is an indeterminate form, right? So this is, this is indeterminate, but it's not either of the two I need to do L'Hopital's. So I need to find a way to rewrite this so that it looks like a quotient. Well, the easiest way to rewrite this and make this a quotient is to move this guy to the bottom. Move to the denominator. Because he already has the negative exponent, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my algebra skills, because again, that's totally not a calc skill, to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of a root x on top of this e to the x. Right? I move him to the bottom. When he switches floors, he gets a positive. So, so see, I took this guy and moved him to the bottom. Well, now when I plug in, I definitely get... The square root of infinity is an infinity. e to the infinity is also an infinity. Now I'm okay to do L'Hopital's. And that's the trick, right? Once I do that, I'm all good to do L'Hopital's. So now, when I differentiate, right, uh, I'm going to get that this is the limit as x approaches infinity of, remember that this is actually an x to the 1 half. So this is going to be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. Well, when I clean this up a little bit, what ends up happening is everybody but the 1 lands on the bottom. There's a 2, there's a root x, there's an e to the x. That means that I've got a finite number on the top and a bunch of infinity on the bottom. So when I plug in, I'm just going to get a 0, and that's my answer. Um, all right, let me give you another one. 
Hmm. Let's do. Would it be another one that we can switch to? Yeah. All right. Cool. So we have E five. Sorry, the purple marker kind of sticks. Okay. So for P five. Do the limit as x approaches infinity. Let's do e to the negative x over 2 times x squared. Okay, so uh, give this one a try. It's a similar situation where you're going to have a 0 times an infinity, right? So pause me if you don't want me to do it with you. But if you plug in, you're going to get an e to the negative infinity, which is 0, times an infinity squared, which is infinity. So, so this, is, this is indeterminate, but it's not infinity over infinity or 0 over 0, right? So I need to rewrite this. So again, the natural choice in rewriting this is to say, wait a second, I can easily move this guy to the other floor, right? So if I do that, I'm going to get this as the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared on top of an e to the x over 2. When I plug in, that is definitely infinity over infinity, so I'm okay to do L'Hopital's, okay? When I do my L'Hopital's, I get that this is the limit as x approaches infinity of a 2x on top of e to the x over 2 times 1 half, right? Because that would be the chain rule part. If you want to clean that up a little, you can make it the limit as x approaches infinity. You can flip that 1 half up and make this a 4x over e to the x over 2. You don't have to, but when you plug in, you still get infinity over infinity, so you're going to have to L'Hopital's again. So I get the limit as x approaches infinity of a 4, and that's a good sign because that top is finite, over an e to the x over 2 times 1 half. Now you can clean it up if you want. The answer is definitely going to be 0 at this point because that's just a finite number on top of an infinite number, right? Finite on top of something infinite is going to be 0. Okay? Uh, that's our P5. All right, let's see if we can do a couple others. All right, so uh, let's do 1 raised to the infinity. This is actually a pretty uh, famous one that we're going to walk through right now. So for example 6, I think this is 6. I keep losing it. For example 6, uh, let's do uh, the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity 1 plus 1 over x raised to the now, if you plug this in, right, you would get 1 plus 0 raised to the infinity, which is 1 to the infinity. And this is an indeterminate form, but it's not 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So the trick here, and this is definitely a really hard question, and you will possibly see L'Hopital's questions at this level uh, when you get to your AP. You're not going to see a ton of them at this level just yet. The trick is that the only way to rewrite this is to say, let's say that we, we're going to let, um, so we're going to call L the answer. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say L equals the answer to this problem. Okay, And the only way that we have mathematically to take something that is exponential and make it not exponential is to use the properties of logarithms. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And again, you might be thinking, but seriously, Hogan, and I will remind you <coughs> that I said it was the algebra, not the calculus, that kicks your butt in this class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of my answer L, and I'm going to set that equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of this stuff. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because there is a property of logarithms <coughs> that allows us to drop powers down in front of them. And what that's going to do is that's going to take something that's exponential and it's going to change it into a product. And you might be thinking, that doesn't feel much better. And I get it, but it's going to get better. <coughs> so I have the limit as x approaches infinity of x times this natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Now, the natural log of 1 is a 0. The issue I'm running into is that I need this to be a quotient, because if you look at all the indeterminate forms that I have, I want to have a quotient, and I don't have one. So I'm going to actually treat this x like it's an x over 1, okay? Um, and I'm going to 
recognize that instead of timesing by x over 1, right, so, so multiplication, so multiplication by x over 1 is the same as division by the reciprocal, right, dividing by the reciprocal. So I'm going to recognize that I could write this natural log of L as the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x divided by 1 over x. This is now a 0 over 0 because if I plug in, I get the natural log of 1, which is 0, <coughs> on top of a 1 over infinity, which we have established is 0. So now I'm okay to use L'Hopital's. Now what's crazy about that <coughs> is I haven't done any calculus yet. So I've gotten all the way down to here and I haven't done any calculus. So now let's do some calculus. So I'm now okay to L'Hopital, but I'm out of room. So what I'm going to do is erase what's over here so that I have some room to do L'Hopital. So from here, <coughs> I'm going to come up here and say that this is, uh, that the natural log of L is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the derivative of natural log of 1 plus the quantity 1 over x. Uh, if it helps, remember that this is actually an x to the negative first, and so is this guy. This guy's actually an x to the negative first. Um, so uh, the derivative of this is going to be 1 over the stuff, right? Derivative of natural log of stuff of, of x is 1 over x. So 1 over the stuff times the derivative of the stuff, which is going to be a 0, minus a 1x to the negative second, which we'll deal with in a second. And on the bottom, the derivative of the x to the negative first is a negative 1x to the negative second, right? And you can clean those up if you want, okay? Uh, this gives you the natural log of L equals the limit as x approaches infinity of a 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times, this is a negative 1 over x squared. It doesn't really matter because what I want you to notice is that the negative 1 over x squareds are going to cancel from the top and the bottom. So now I get this nice situation where I have the natural log of L equals the limit as x approaches infinity of a 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Now when I plug in infinities, I get that this is a 1 over a 1 plus 0, which is totally just a 1. So I get that the natural log of L is a 1. In order to solve for L, because remember L was my original answer, I need to exponentiate both sides, and I'm going to get that L is e to the first or just e. So L is Euler's number, right? This is Euler's number. Please don't say Euler's. Uh, so this is Euler's number. Uh, it's the E that you learned about when you did all sorts of, uh, so it's the E that is the base of the natural log. So it is the base of the natural log. Um, it's the E in E to the X, right? That's Euler's number, right? That's, that's what that is. So this is the actual definition of Euler's number. Um, this is how we find Euler's number, uh, but again, uh, that's the definition of E. So this is this is really tricky, I'm not going to lie, I get that that's not an easy problem. Um, so let's, uh, let's do another one of those, let's do another uh, 1 to the infinity if I can find you a good one. So for P6, uh, this is P6, so we're going to do uh, the limit as... Uh, x approaches infinity of 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 uh, raised to the square root of x. Sorry, I was trying to use my arm to block the glare. Okay, so this is another one of those uh, 1 to the infinity situations. So if you try to plug in here, right, we already know uh, from our experience using logic on this stuff that as, as this thing, the inside thing goes to infinity, we're only going to care about the leading coefficients. So they're going to be a 2 over 2, which is a 1, right? So as we plug in, this inside thing is going to go to a 1, and the top is going to be infinitely large. So while this is indeterminate, it is not 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So just like we saw last time, the way to do this problem is to call the answer, let's say, L, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to take the natural log of L, which is my answer, and I'm going to take the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of this 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1 to the square root of x. And the reason I do that is because this allows me to drop this square root down in front. So that's going to be the limit as x approaches infinity of uh, the square root of x, which I'm actually going to end up putting towards the back of this in the end, but it's fine, uh, times this natural log. Okay. So, 
just like we saw last time, if I plugged in now, I would get infinity times a 1, which is, or infinity times a 0, which is actually not helping me, right? So if I were to plug in now, I would have an infinity, because the square root of infinity, times the natural log of 1, which is a 0. So I get infinity times 0, which is still an indeterminate form, but is not 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. So the way to deal with that is to recognize that instead of multiplying by this, instead, we could divide by 1 over that square root of x, right? So what's going to happen is that I'm going to get that this is the natural log of L, which is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of this whole ugly thing over a 1 over the square root of x. Now when I plug in, I get the natural log of 1, which is a 0, and a 1 divided by infinity, which is also a 0. So now, after all that, I'm okay to do loopy calls. Now that said, this is a, a bit of a gut buster of a problem, but we're going to walk through it. So uh, if it's easier to picture this as an x to the negative 1 half down here, you can. Like, that would be a little bit easier. Um, so when we go ahead and do this, right, we're going to differentiate the top and the bottom. Now the hard part about this is that this is a chain that has a high function and a low function. There is a quotient inside your chain, right? And there's other ways to deal with that. Um, if you choose, you could use log properties to split this up into two logarithms, which is not a terrible life choice. Uh, but we haven't really talked about uh, logarithmic differentiation yet in this class, uh, so I'm going to assume that maybe you're not aware that that's an option. Uh, but you could actually make this the natural log of the top function minus the natural log of the bottom, which would make life significantly easier. Um, okay, so when we differentiate, right, we're going to get this is the limit as x approaches infinity, right, of when I differentiate the top, I'm going to get 1 over the stuff, so 2x plus 1 over 2x minus 1, right, times the derivative of the stuff, which is going to be low, v high, minus high, v low, draw the line, square the low, all over, I'm going to differentiate this, right? I'm going to end up getting, uh, I drop the negative 1 half down in front, so I'm going to get negative 1 half x to the negative 3 halves, right? Uh, cool. And let's keep going. So when I clean up this crazy, crazy monstrosity, because it's not super fun, so let's go ahead and clean this up. I'm going to get a, on top here, I get a 4x minus 2 minus 4x minus 2, so I get a negative 4, right? Uh, so up here, I'm going to have this guy inverted, so he's a, let me clean this up a little bit, we'll just do separate work for a sec. I get a 2x minus 1 on top of the 2x plus 1, times a negative 4 on top of this 2x minus 1 quantity squared, which means one of the 2x minus 1s cancels, and I get that the numerator seems to be a negative 4 over a 2x plus 1 times a 2x minus 1. The bottom seems to be a negative 1 over a 2x to the 3 halves. Now, if we clean this up, as disgusting as this looks, so this is the limit as x approaches infinity of this horrible, horrible mess, so we're going to keep going, and I admit this is a super hard problem. Uh, I picked a not easy problem for us to do. Uh, if we clean this horrible mess up, so let's go up here and clean up some stuff for our P6, right? We're going to get that this is, uh, that our natural log of L is the limit as x approaches infinity. Now, I'm going to go ahead and flip this guy and multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to have a negative 4 over this uh, 4x squared minus 1, if I FOIL this guy out, okay? times this 2x cubed, uh, 2x to the 3 halves, rather, over negative 1. So I think that ends up being the limit as x approaches infinity of a negative 8x to the 3 halves divided by a 4x squared minus 1. So at this moment, I'm going to make the argument that this thing approaches 0. Now, I could continue to do lopi calls to figure that out, but I'm going to make the argument that I know logically that this power is bigger than this power. So this side has to approach zero. You could also do another round of Lopi calls to figure that out, excuse me. But in this case, I think, boy, I'm kind of burned out on this and I'm happy to just be done. So I end up getting 
that the natural log of L equals zero when I exponentiate both sides, right? I end up getting that L is one because e to the zero would be one, right? Um, now, if I were the AP, I would not probably give you a problem this difficult. I'll be honest. AP L'Hopital's problems are usually a multiple choice where it's not probably going to require logarithmic stuff. You're probably not going to have to take the log of both sides. And even if it does, it's probably not quite this disgusting. I think that the, that example six was a better level of that. Um, so it's probably multiple choice, or if it's free responses with a single point, it's nothing to get super stressed about. This is definitely a gut buster of a problem. Uh, I was flipping through and I picked one that I thought looked hard, and it was hard, so there you go. Um, cool. Uh, so we'll stop here on this video, and then uh, I'll dig up a e, uh, E7, P7, and we'll do a couple more of these problems. Again, I know that these are difficult. You're not likely to see anything as hard as these on an AP. If you can do, let's say, examples one through five, you're probably fine. Uh, don't stress if when we do the last couple of examples in a, in a section, they seem really, really tough, because uh, that's the goal, right? The goal is to make sure you've been exposed to problems, even if they're really hard, even if they're maybe more difficult than what you would see on an AP.